ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ವೆಲ್ ವಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಅ ಲವ್ಲಿ ಶಾವರ್ ಬ್ರೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ವೀಕ್ಸ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಅ ಡ್ರಾಪ್ ಆಫ್ ರೈನ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಹೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ರೈನಿ ಸೀಸನ್ ಸೊ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೆಸರ್ಟ್ ಇಪ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಐ ಲವ್ ಇಟ್ the realized who do not know anything as being other than self which is absolute consciousness will not say that the world which has no existence in the view of the supreme brahman is real okay so the realized will not say that the world is real got it <laughs> why they're on the ajatta platform ajatta means unborn that means they are unborn they see themselves as unborn supreme brahman and the world is also seen as unborn you know osho said something interesting one time which i believe is derived from the same truth he said when you attain enlightenment it's like the whole world becomes enlightened you see the same being the self yourself in everything in everybody is so there's no more such thing as other for you so it's like world what world <laughs> because the world is born out of the concept of otherness the concept of difference of division yin yang is the primary or primal division between light and dark energy and space or pick any duality you want <laughs> it is the law of duality in general yin yang So there's no yin yang for the realized. There's no difference, no distinction, no boundary. The realized soul is unlimited like Brahman is unlimited because he is Brahman. He and everything else and everybody else is also Brahman. But can we see this? No. No. Except for when we have path realizations or satori or samadhi or we get a blessing from one of these great realized souls or avatars or siddhas or you know pick your realized soul right you can get but these will not last forever they're only to give you a glimpse a preview huh like uh, you're walking up a winding forest road at night <laughs> and the only light the only thing you can see is a cloudy dark and stormy night right like it is here <laughs> and the only thing you can see to guide you is the light at the top of the temple at the top of the mountain that's the only way you know where you are and you have to feel your way along the road because you can't, can't really see it that's what it's like isn't it <laughs> in vivartavada though you know the road and you know the goal because you've had those previews in fact maybe the signal mm, milestone of transitioning from uh, dvaita dvaita or vishishta dvaita to vivartavada is the experience of stream entry 
It's like once you got that, baby, you are going all the way. It's only a matter of if. I mean, it's only a matter of when, not if anymore. Okay. So the maximum of seven lifetimes. And uh, a, a lot of people lose it right about then. And they go off and try to be the big guru who, you know, conquers the world and everybody loves him. You know. But hey, this is planet Earth. You know what they do to the big guru who everybody loves? <laughs> so be careful. Okay. Don't go running down the street naked, you know, proclaiming yourself to be God. It's not recommended. <laughs> So, okay, then, if we're not, if we're supposed to be cool about that, huh? and we are, because it only applies to a tiny, tiny handful of people on the whole planet. The only way we can talk about the absolute, then, is on the platform of uh, Vivartavada. We know generally what Brahman is, sort of. You know, we can talk around it. And we can also talk quite specifically about the process to reach Brahman. I'm going to adjust the thing here. Okay. The process is not that difficult. The problem is in the definitions of the terms. Which is why from the very beginning, I've always advocated using a dictionary because I was a professional writer for 25 years and I used words according to the dictionary meaning, not slang. Okay. And every word has a specific meaning intended. Huh? And I know what it is and I can recite it to you word by word because I memorized the dictionary when I was six years old. The English dictionary. <laughs> I'm a complete dunce in every other language. <laughs> but English, I know what I'm talking about. So, if I'm saying something here, it's because it needs to be said, number one, to fill in the general topic, which here is the reality of the material world. And so, why is he talking from the Ajata platform? Huh? If, if he knows full well that most of the people coming, except for maybe just a very few handful of completely ripe souls, everybody is on the Vivartavada. Vivartavada. <laughs> I got a bad case of Lysdexia. <laughs> Why is he throwing this out from Ajata? It's like, you know, it's like the treat you show to the, you show to the dog, right? <laughs> Look, I got this treat. <laughs> now, go catch this stick or ball or whatever it is and bring it back. Fetch, go fetch. If he does it, he gets the treat. That's how you train a dog. Do not try this with a cat. <laughs> Or a fox. Oh, actually, foxes can be domesticated. I'm sorry. But any self-respecting cat will not. So why does he throw this out, knowing that we're not really prepared you know, to hear it, to understand it? It's bait. It's the treat in the dog owner's hand. A good disciple is more like a dog than a cat. Huh? I'm not a very good disciple. I'm more like a cat than a dog. <laughs> I have to find out everything for myself, usually the hard way. <laughs> but I still, I never forget the instructions of my gurus. And uh, I know that in the end, I'm going to come around and accept them. You know, I have to, because they're the truth. So anyway, why is he throwing this out to bait us, uh, to hook us, to reel us in? <laughs> Because the next verse is on the Vivarta platform. Oh man, like a parrot waiting expectantly for the silk cotton fruit to ripen, 
you persist in your sufferings, believing this world appearance to be real and enjoyable. If the world is real simply because it appears to your senses, then a mirage would be water. Uh, this is an example of Maharshi's famous sarcasm. <laughs> because he's heard this, he's gone round and round this argument with so many idiots, more than you can count, huh? that the world is not real. What do you mean it's not real? I can see it right here in front of me. <laughs> Arf, arf, <laughs> bork, bork. <laughs> and he's going, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, here's another one. <laughs> if the fact that you could see this world with your senses makes it real, then seeing a mirage would be water. Dude, <laughs> Maharshi is a riot, I'm telling you, he's hysterical. <laughs> and right on. Huh? Absolutely right on. It's the whole the whole world suffering from this disease uh, of just because I can see it with my senses, it must be real. But it's not real and it can't be real because it's temporary. And it's, it's demonstrable and provable at every level of form. At least, uh, you know, up to our you know, macro level, you know, like the scientists have shown. Everything is in constant change. The whole universe is in complex motion. Which is unpredictable. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody can know what's going to happen because it won't. We, even nature doesn't know until it actually happens. Now, in this instruction, he's speaking very comfortably on the Vivartavada platform. Uh, that he's presenting an instruction which basically treats the world as an appearance. That's what Vivarta means. The world is an appearance only. So vivartavada means the world is an appearance. So that implies there is a way to disappear it. And of course, that is uh, the ajatta view. So until one, I, no matter what word I, I use, it's wrong. Until one attains or reaches or uh, is able to cultivate or uh, synthesize or mock up or create or manifest or whatever, <laughs> the ajatta consciousness, one has to go through the Raja Yoga process on the Vivarta platform. And the Vivarta platform is, okay, I know the world is an illusion, I'm hip to it, I, I get it, you convinced me, and I've seen also. I've had a few blessings, I've had a few uh, unexplainable experiences that I felt intuitively were it, but they didn't stay. And, that's, and now I realize that's because I didn't do my work. I didn't do my sadhana. And so these, uh, this mind has clung to me and dragged me here and there all over the world. Uh, and actually made a fool of me <laughs> in so many ways. Let's not even get started. So this rascal mind <laughs> has to be put in its place. And that's what needs to be done. That's what everybody needs to do. And that's what the Buddha called it. Do what needs to be done. And when you do, you're going to feel so much better. It's just getting started is really hard. Because what do these 
Well, so, sometimes, frankly, weird descriptions of ajata actually mean. Well, we can't know. We can't. There's no way to know because it's an experience. It's not an idea. And it can't be an idea. It's too big. Ideas can't, can't fit it. Only experience, only consciousness can fit it. So when we get it that my consciousness is so unlimited that even God shows up in it with plenty of room to spare, uh, that means the real path of self-realization can only be based on consciousness, awareness. Awareness has to be the key. Not performance of rituals, although that is very nice. Not even love of God, although that's very beautiful and elevating. And not even mastery of all the abstruse calculus of, of uh, non-dual philosophy and seven-valued logic and whatever. Uh, not even that. They will help. Uh, not even sitting for hours and days and weeks and months and years. There is no action that you can take that will produce consciousness or enlightenment or influence how consciousness works in you in any way whatsoever. But there is a way that you can prepare yourself. You can clean your mechanism, clean your machine, as Gurdjieff would say, huh? and prepare it to receive something, uh, something from a higher level. And, and we have defined what higher level means here very clearly. We're not just, it's not just woo-woo talk. This is like, ontologically precise definitions, right? <laughs> That's why I've been studying this stuff for so many years. Uh, look at matrix learning and you'll understand it. The system that I use to analyze systems. So what's a system that analyzes systems? It's a meta system. And a meta system is beyond all other systems. It's big enough to fit any kind of system. And that's what this is. This, these four categories are a meta system that's big enough to fit every known category of religious or spiritual practice, belief, philosophy, and so forth. I don't care whether you're a, a deep south holy roller or uh, a Yankee intellectual or a European snob or a Russian rascal, or a Chinese whatever, or a Zen guy, or, or an Aborigine, or a Pacific Islander, or Eskimo, or whatever. Uh, the same truths are there. The same hidden treasures are in everyone's consciousness. If they can only wrap their mind around this all-embracing system, which I've been searching for my whole life. Okay, this is not like, oh yeah, he went to Tirvanala a year or two ago and now he's all up with Ramana Maharshi and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. You know, people talk like that, but that's just gossip. Nobody knows what's really going on because I keep to myself. I don't share my mud, you know, and I sure don't throw it. So anyway, you have to do the work to experience this for yourself. Only then will you know. But I'm telling you, there's no shortage of people who will be willing to tell you that, hey, this process works. You know, go on Facebook and go on the Ramana Maharshi uh, boards or groups or whatever they call it, and check with these people. Huh? Uh, people have experiences. That's why they come here. They have deep experiences here of connecting with Brahman and, and the whole and all that good stuff. Now they may interpret it this way or that way, and we may like it or we may not like it <laughs> philosophically, okay? 
But the point is they're getting some results. You know, I had one heard one guy say, I, I was a Buddhist monk for six years, and then I gave it up because I wasn't getting any results. And I became a doctor, and I was doing research into how meditation can help pe heal people with multiple sclerosis. And suddenly one day I had this experience where I was outside of my body, and I saw the whole planet, and there was this, this light coming from South India, and I followed it down, and there was... Ramana Maharshi and blah, 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 and here I am. I don't know why. I don't understand what he's talking about, but, you know, I didn't understand what Buddha was talking about either. <laughs> That's because it's beyond understanding. It ain't called the esoteric teaching for nothing. <laughs> okay, it's deep. I told you in the beginning, we're going in the deep end of the pool now. You got your rubber ducky? <laughs> Om Tatsa. Om Harihi Om. 